So tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And as you as you may well, well know, uh, obviously St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland, big holiday over in Ireland. But also massive celebrations and a, and a, a massive celebratory weekend for a lot of big cities on the, on the East Coast of the United States. In fact, uh, I believe, it, is it Chicago where they dye the river? So they dye the river green for St. Patrick's Day. Like, like th this is how big the sort of the celebrations are over there. But it's also to to show how big the Irish lobby is over there in America, because you've got a big sort of uh, what's it now the um, uh, the big island fund. I think it's a big sort of lobby dinner that's like sort of the central hub. And again, it's to sort of like St. Patrick's Day to build sort of the the, the true special relationship between Ireland and, of course, the US, because as much as you UK politicians talk about the UK and the US having a special relationship, the reality is the special relationship probably exists a lot more with Ireland and the US rather than it does with the UK and the US. And this comes back to what I always said the DUP would be doing, because already Already, the DUP are now trying to find a way not to accept the Windsor framework. I, you should not be surprised, by the way, if you've been following this channel, if you've been following the videos on this, you should not be surprised on this. This, this is what I said from day one covering this situation. That the DUP are just prepared to jump on a roundabout and just go round and round and round and just start causing chaos until they get exactly what they want. And the thing is, what they want is essentially the first minister position. And of course, things in the, the, the political situation in Northern Ireland dramatically changing in Northern Ireland. And the DUP cannot accept that that situation has now changed. So ever since the local elections, when Sinn Féin won the first uh, minister position, of course, the DUP would have to accept the, the deputy uh, first minister position under the power sharing rules and agreements. No, we're not going to accept that. So they refused ever since May of last year to go into power sharing. This has led to them saying, oh, no, the reason why we're not going into this, not, you know, the fact that, well, they lost. <laughs> no. It's it's oh it's the uh, the Northern Ireland Protocol. We we don't like Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, needs to be changed. And now we have a new protocol. <laughs> and of course, as soon as it comes out, we'll, we'll refer to it as the Windsor Framework versus the Northern Ireland Protocol that we had before. We've now got the Windsor Framework. Just so you you know which deal we're talking about. <laughs> so. The Northern Ireland product, the, the sorry, the Windsor framework is essentially the best deal. The best deal. Not only the UK, uh, Ireland, the EU, and even the DUP could ever get, because there ain't nothing better than this, unless all the UK joins the single market and customs union. <laughs> and to be honest, there's possibly there's quite a good possibility of that happening possibly within the next 10 years or so. Because I'll tell you now, Rishi Sunak saying that Northern Ireland being in the single market and customs union being the best thing ever. Well, what about the rest of the UK? One of the things I say the, the, the S&P should cons consistently bang the drum on is, uh, yeah, can, can we be part of the single market customs union as well? <laughs> yes. We want, we want that. Our, our we voted in as well. Can we have that? <laughs> uh, would not surprise me um, if they sort of continued on that. And if, again, if I was an S and P uh, MP, I would be making that point every single time, <laughs> every single time, every single opportunity I could. Um, but yeah, going going back to sort of this situation, <sighs> yeah. They're, they're they're just looking for an excuse now to to not going to it. They've they've come out very recently, or at least Donaldson has come out recently, and he said this is a good start. Not that this is 
a deal that's been agreed and, and been agreed upon and we've we've all gone through it and we've agreed and we've done it. Excellent. We, we're all ready to sign off on it. Donaldson is, is like sort of come in at the, the, the 12th hour and gone, okay, that's a good start, but can we have more? <laughs> and everyone around the table is looking at him going, um, what do you mean you want more? This is the best deal we could ever get. And, of course, uh, being St. Patrick's Day, uh, very much a traditional time, as we said, for, for, for U.S. island relations, Chuck Schumer has now waded into this to say, hey, look, DUP, you should return to power sharing. So we're just going to read his his comments that he had to the DUP, and then we'll also read back uh, what uh, uh, Jeffrey Donaldson had to say in response. So he had this to say about this. He said, uh, so Chuck Schumer, I had this to say. So now the Windsor framework has been announced. Uh, I sincerely hope that it clears the way for the DUP to join Sinn Féin in a power sharing agreement. I say this to all parties in the North, but especially to the DUP. Let's get to the people's business, the business of power sharing and self-government. He also said that as a majority leader of the United States Senate, which decides on treaties, I will not support any trade deal between the US and the UK if any settlement undermines the Good Friday Agreement. And if you've been listening to this channel again for the longest time, that's not news. That what like Chuck Schumer's comments are not news. That is something they have been saying since day one, even before, even during the referendum. As what uh Barack Obama and even Biden was saying, do not undermine the Good Friday Agreement. Because you ain't getting a trade deal. And even Trump, if he had managed to agree to one, the, the Democrats and even Irish Republicans would have put a stop to it. Because that's how powerful that lobby is in America. And of course, um, Jeffrey Donaldson replied um, uh, saying this. So I said, I would urge the senator to read some history books. Maybe you'll learn a little bit more about what really happens and the reality of the situation. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jeffrey. Um, if you read the history books, your party <coughs> is entirely in this situation because it's a situation of your own making. Theresa May essentially had the Northern Ireland backstop, which would have kept all the um, the UK essentially in a customs union. Now, of course, the hardcore Brexiteers hated that. They loathed that. And they started to egg you on. They started to egg on the DUP because also the DUP did not want to be, um, should we say, the roadblock that stopped Brexit or that didn't give all the UK Brexit because they were, again, they were big Brexiteers. They were massively behind Brexit, the DUP. So, they linked up with the Brexiteers to, to undermine Theresa May, to get rid of her, uh, especially when sort of they, they agreed into the, uh, the, the, again, after the disastrous 2017 election, they gave her support, they withdrew it, constantly undermined her, ended up in the situation which got which brought the Northern Ireland Protocol. They absolutely hated it and despised it. Why? Because the Brexiteers threw them under the bus to get Brexit done. The DUP hated it. They've Use the excuse of um, not being uh, be able to be first minister, being second, in the hopes that maybe them rebelling maybe brings them some people to them. But again, the people of Northern Ireland love the Northern Ireland Protocol, and here's the thing: they love even more the Windsor Agreement, which you're now saying is a good start. But now we need to go further. No, no, no. This this is it. This is it. This is your stop. Jeffrey, you need to get off the bus. You need to get off the carousel. You need to get off the roundabout at this exit because this is it. You ain't getting better than this. Because Rishi Sunak is not going to undermine the Good Friday Agreement to potentially damage any at least hopeful future trade agreement the UK might want with the US. You just ain't worth it, Jeffrey. So, uh, once again, the DUP are on that carousel causing chaos after chaos after chaos, and they just do not care. And even though we've got a 
new agreement. The DU position, the DUP position has not changed. So we'll be keeping an eye on this, but um, yeah, the DUP ain't returning. Expect in maybe a couple of weeks, maybe in a couple of months to, to the DUP to be absolutely hating on the Windsor framework. Uh, put in that phone call now for a future date. <laughs> so when you hear that ringing, you know it was me calling. So as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, we'll see you all next time. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, my motivation link, the Buy Me a Coffee link, and of course, the YouTube thank you button and the Pony Club as well. And of course, we'll see you all next time.